Welcome. Here at Emory, our physician teams are at the forefront of medical knowledge and research. Every day, they're pioneering new procedures that are changing the face of medical history. And stroke is one of those areas where Emory is leading the way in terms of innovation and treatment. Did you know that about 700,000 Americans suffer a stroke every year? And the vast majority of those people survive. So today, there are around 5 million Americans who are managing their care along with the help of family, friends, and caregivers. The Emory Neuroscience Center is where we offer a unique approach to the diagnosis, treatment, care, and prevention of stroke. The following short presentation by the Emory Neurosciences team is designed to provide you with news you can use to learn more about stroke and its leading forms of treatment. Dr. Daniel Barrow. There are a number of risk factors that place individuals at uh, higher or lower risk of stroke. And I think you can oftentimes uh, divide those risk factors into factors that we have some control over and those we don't have any control over. For example, some of the risk factors that we have no control over is being a man. The male sex has a higher risk of stroke and there's not much we can do about that. Family history is another uh, important risk factor that we have no control over. If your family has a history of stroke, statistically you're at higher risk of having a stroke. Um, conditions like diabetes, we don't really control whether we get diabetes, but once we get it, we can manage it uh, very aggressively and reduce the risk of stroke. But there are a number of risk factors that we do have control over. Uh, risk factors such as high blood pressure. Uh, although we can't always help whether we get high blood pressure, it is a very treatable condition that oftentimes, because it doesn't cause pain, doesn't cause any suffering or any symptoms until it's too late, many people ignore the, uh, the, their doctor's advice and don't take their medications appropriately. Uh, hypercholesterolemia, elevated fatty, uh, tissue, uh, fatty substances in the blood, is something we do have a, con a control over. There are medications now that very effectively reduce the cholesterol and other dangerous fats in our bloodstream. Uh, smoking probably is one of the greatest risk factors that we have complete control over. And probably more so than any other controllable risk factor, smoking increases the risk of uh, stroke as well as heart disease. Um, those uh, other factors that we have control over that are less well studied uh, might include the use of cocaine. Uh, more recently it has been determined that uh, the ingestion of cocaine uh, can markedly increase the risk of stroke, particularly in young people where the risk of stroke is traditionally felt to be quite low. Uh, the use of alcohol uh, is one of those controllable risk factors that actually may be a, a two-edged sword. Uh, there is plenty of evidence today that Drinking uh, small amounts of alcohol, moderate amounts, uh, particularly for males, may actually have some protective effect against heart disease and perhaps stroke, but certainly the uh, chronic use of uh, alcohol in heavy amounts has uh, many, many uh, health uh, uh, risks, including increasing the risk of, of stroke. Uh, the role of physical activity in remaining fit is still being defined, but there is ab abundant uh, evidence coming out that that being overweight and being uh, unfit physically probably is a contributing factor to a stroke. There is a common misperception that stroke is something that only happens in the elderly and therefore if I'm not elderly I really don't need to worry about it. But that really isn't entirely true. Uh, indeed, many of the risk factors that contribute to stroke are risk factors that become more apparent as we age and the aging population is statistically at higher risk of uh, developing stroke. However, there are many risk factors that do affect the young. Uh, we mentioned earlier about the risk of taking drugs such as cocaine and we have seen an increase in the number of hemorrhagic strokes in young people uh, because of the ingestion of uh, cocaine or uh, uh, amphetamines, uh, both of which raise the blood pressure very, very high and uh, sometimes to dangerous levels. Uh, there are other conditions, inherited conditions, uh, blood disorders that place younger people at risk. And there are a variety of conditions about which we really have little understanding. One in particular is a condition called Moya Moya disease, uh, which occurs in young people and uh, results in the progressive occlusion of blood vessels in the brain that supply blood to the brain. We don't know the cause. Uh, we're seeing more patients with this condition and oftentimes have to resort to uh, rather heroic uh, surgical means to treat these uh, unfortunate patients. Another myth, I think, that permeates not only the public, but perhaps even the medical community, 
is the idea that, well, there really isn't anything we can do about stroke, so why worry about the early warning signs and the risk factors? And really, nothing could be further from the truth. There are many treatments today for stroke. Emory Healthcare offers a unique approach to care for stroke. Please call 404-778-7777 or visit our website, www.emoryhealthcare.org, to learn more about the entire Emory Neurosciences Center. Emory, advancing the possibilities for you.